What's up, all my Jaguars out there, and welcome to another epic episode of Ralph's Universe, The Reboot. But that's pretty much obvious, don't you think? Let's do it. All right, Jaguars, I know that you all want me to review another epic episode of Catfish, the TV show for the third season, and I really want to review it for you all. And you know that I want to. You know that I'm excited and amped for this season. But for, but for the past few weeks, there has not been a new episode of Catfish the TV show for the third season. What's going on? That's a damn good question. I'm also wondering what the F is going on. If this show is on a break slash hiatus, then I gotta say, this is a long ass break. Because it really feels like forever that Neve and Max have been on this quote-unquote break if we're calling it that. Now if Catfish the TV show is not coming out with a new episode anytime soon then we'll just have to move on to the next big news that's currently going on. But rest assured I will, I will do some checking and see what I can see if I can shed some light on this situation and find out what's going on with our quote unquote online PI team and even Max. I hope this show does come back soon to its regular time slot of Wednesday night, 10 p.m. on MTV. If not, then the fifth season of Teen Mom 2 will be filling that spot for the time being. So, let's talk about this. Mimi Foss's sex tape. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was both Nico and Mimi that made this sex tape. But because of the way that it's being hyped since it came out, Mimi is the one that's getting all the attention and hype from this. Or at least that's the way that I'm seeing it. As you all may already know, I am currently watching the third season of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta for the third season. And OMG, it is an epic season. Probably more epic than the first two seasons of Love and Hip Hop in the A. Now you're watching the show on... If you're watching the show on VH1 like I am, you're seeing that by now the sex tape of Mimi Faust and her man Nico London was stolen when the couple was on their way back to the A from the Bahamas at an airport. Then Media Takeout, the number one blog site in the world, were the first company to get a copy of Mimi's sex tape. Then the sex tape came out. OMG. The SHIT hit the fan and boy did it hit hardcore. I'm telling you Jaguars, ever since Mimi, ever since her sex tape came out, Mimi has been getting a lot of heat, not just in the A, but in the whole effing world. And people left and right have really been coming down hard on Mimi. But of course, like Nico suggested, Mimi decided instead of letting the tape run around for free, she should capitalize on it by signing a contract with an adult porn industry so, so that she would get a huge cut of the profits just before the sex tape came out. 
And now Mimi is getting offers left and right. Left, right, and all over. Heck, even Benzino, head of Hip Hop Weekly, wanted to put Mimi on the cover of his magazine. And Benzino did. And you know this really benefited the magazine a lot. Now Jaguars and fans of hip hop, let's get to the point. What I really want to discuss in this episode of the reboot is the aftermath and hardcore effects of Mimi's sex tape being released for the whole effing world. Not just the hip hop community, but the whole effing world to see. You all know that all of the haters and critics are making comments and taking verbal jabs at Mimi Faust on the social media. Now, that had to be expected, but what couldn't be expected was the reaction of the close friends of Mimi in regards to the sex tape coming out. Now, I understand that they're all shell-shocked by this because I was too when I heard about Mimi's sex tape. It's okay to be shocked. Like I mentioned before in this, various people all over, you know, got something to say about Mimi's sex tape. I have watched their videos here on YouTube and heard what most of them had to say. And for some of them, I really can't believe what they're saying about Mimi. I picked out a few of them and I would like to comment on these critics. I'll start with some well-known celebs and figures in hip-hop. Here is Professor Griff. He was a founding member of the ever-popular and legendary rap group known as Public Enemy and head of the security of the First World, a.k.a. S1W. I remember being a kid listening to the epic music of Public Enemy. I saw Professor Griff in their videos and when they performed on the Soul Train dance TV show. I think Professor Griff I think Professor Griff was a great addition to PE. That's short for Public Enemy. Now this professor has his own website and has put together his own group. The last Asiatic disciples. With the help of that group, Griff put out albums like Pawns in the Game and Chaos to Wiz, Star Seven Star Dome, to name a few. Griff is is also a member of the Nation of Islam. Professor Griff had some choice words for Mimi Mimi's sex tape. And I quote, What does that have to do with hip hop? What does any of that have to do with hip hop? And Griff also said that hip hop stands for higher infinite power healing our people. OMG, this whole effing time I never knew that's what hip hop stood for. Oh man, I thought that was just the name of the culture of music. Holy cow, Jaguars. I guess you do learn something new every day. It's pretty obvious that by Professor Griff's speech that he doesn't agree with Mimi making this sex tape. I mean, the professor really did put this into perspective for us, didn't he? I'm really impressed by Professor Griff's speech. The link to Professor Griff's video talking about Mimi and her sex tape is in the info bar slash description section of this episode of the reboot. And so will the links to the other videos that I have watched here on YouTube of people talking about Mimi and her sex tape. (sighs) 
Now Steve Harvey also had something to say about Mimi's sex tape. And we all know who Steve Harvey is. He stars in various comedy sitcom TV shows. Steve made a tape in audio and even though he didn't mention Mimi's name, he referred to Mimi and her decision to make a sex tape and try to benefit from it. In Steve's speech, he said that women are not here for sex. They're here for so much more. And you know what? I agree with that statement. I agree with that sentence. But I don't really agree with Steve Harvey's speech because he really is, you know, off base with Mimi's situation. Though, it is a long speech and kind of nice. I'll give Steve Harvey that. Another hip hop artist that's on the show, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Young Jock had good stuff to say about Mimi's sex tape. Like everyone else, you know, Young Jock was really shocked that Mimi made a sex tape with Nico. And when you see his video reacting to Mimi's sex tape, you'll see that Jock really loved Mimi's sex tape. It seems like Young Jock really likes this side of Mimi here. Here is Benzino. He did an interview with Vlad TV and gave his thoughts on Mimi and Nico's sex tape. Benzino compared this to a preview of a movie and gave it a real high rating. And Benzino also said that he could have picked up some pointers from Mimi's sex tape. Wow. Okay. Very good opinion. Now, those are just what I call the initial critics. Some good, some critical. Now let's get to the two ladies that are just flat out hating on Mimi's sex tape. Jocelyn Hernandez and Kay Michelle. These ladies actually sat in a studio in New York and watched Mimi's sex tape together. And as expected, you know, both Jocelyn and Kay Michelle mocked, made dirty jokes, and laughed at Mimi and Nico. It's pretty apparent that they didn't like Mimi's sex tape. Or if they did like it, don't they like, you know, mocking and ridiculing it and making fun of it. Which is not really surprising because Mimi has, you know, beef with these two ladies and vice versa. So it's really no surprise here, you know, about the reaction of Jocelyn and K. Michelle's, you know, reaction to Mimi's sex tape. Now let's talk about Mimi's close personal friends. And the three that I have chosen are Rashida, Erica Dixon, and Arian Davis. Now these ladies right here are real close to Mimi. From what I've seen on the show, they're real close to Mimi and support Mimi a lot. And especially Arian, Mimi's best friend. And even though it wasn't mentioned on any of the seasons of this show, I get the feeling that Arian is like Mimi's BFF since she's known Mimi for a long time. Now, best friends are supposed to support each other and never doubt each other no matter what. And they're certainly not supposed to ever judge or pass judgment on each other. Well, if that's the case, 
then I'm most definitely disappointed in these three ladies right here. When Mimi's sex tape came out, I knew that Rashida, Erica, and Arian would be shell-shocked, hardcore, and they were. All three of them were. Erica and Arian watched the tape together and they were stunned. Erica was really pissed off after watching that sex tape of Mimi. And when I say pissed off, I really do mean pissed off Jaguars. Erica had, you know, anger obviously running through her whole body. And, and on top of all that, the girl had tears coming out of her eyes. Damn. And Arian just had no words. You know, I expected that kind of reaction. But what I didn't expect was these ladies would actually doubt Mimi and judge her and come down on Mimi. What the F is that all about? And Mimi told Rashida, Erica, and Arian that she had nothing to do with the tape coming out and Rashida, Erica, and Arian didn't believe Mimi. They actually thought that Mimi planned this. What the F? Are you shi me on this? You mean to tell me that all three of these ladies have known Mimi for a real long time and now just because they see something shocking that Mimi did, they are going to doubt Mimi's word? Are you really shi me? Come on now. This is supposed to be your best friend here and you're doubting her word? I have to ask, what kind of friends are these ladies? What kind? Mimi was, Mimi was very disappointed in Rashida, Erica, and Arian, and rightfully so. And I'm disappointed in these ladies as well. Friends are supposed to stick by each other no matter what happens. Even though shocking things come out, like a sex tape, they're shocked, understandable. They're disappointed, understandable. They're mad, also understandable. At least that's, that's the way that I see it. But what I don't find understanding is these so-called friends passing judgment, ridiculing, and coming down on Mimi when she needs their supposed to, her support the most at a time like this. Especially a time like this when Mimi's dad just passed away. <sighs> Not really a time for Mimi to deal with the aftermath of her sex tape coming out. But all three of these ladies, Arian, yeah, but of all three of these ladies, Arian should really feel bad because Mimi's best friend and this is the time when Mimi needs Arian. But instead, Arian is coming down on Mimi for the sex tape. Jeez. In the midst of the sex tape coming out, Mimi's dad had a stroke. Then the doctors amputated his leg to save his life. But it didn't work. Mimi's father had passed away. He just couldn't go on. That is really jacked up Jaguars. This is what, this is, was very hard for Mimi to deal with. All of this SHIT coming at her, her father just passing away, and the whole world is asking her about the sex tape. Most of the people didn't even care that Mimi just lost her father. They just wanted to interview her about her sex tape. That's really effed up, don't you think? Jeez. And then if that wasn't enough, when Mimi was doing a radio interview about all of the stuff that, she, that was happening to her, Stevie J 
says stuff, you know, mean to me, me, and sent her a mean text simply because he was upset about the sex tape. <sighs> yeah, I'm really disappointed in Stevie J. For a guy who calls himself the quote-unquote good guy, he does some sleazy things sometimes. Which is why Benzino often calls Stevie J. Sleezo. Hey Stevie, Mimi's dad just passed away. F the sex tape. Really. It's really not the time to be coming at Mimi for the sex tape. Okay? Stevie should know better. Jeez. He really should. It's really not the time for Mimi to be dealing with the sex tape on on the account of the fact that she just had a terrible loss. And throughout this whole thing, Mimi actually felt that the only people that are on her side are Nico and her daughter. And it's very natural for her to feel that way because of the way that everyone else is acting. And they're all acting as if Mimi is responsible for the sex tape being leaked and coming out for the whole world to see. And that is not the case. Somebody stole Nico's bag. And in that bag was the sex tape of Mimi and Nico. Then Mimi was backed into a corner and had to make a very difficult decision. She made the best decision possible, and I commend her for it. Mimi, I'm really sorry that your dad passed away. My heart goes out to you and your family. You said that you felt that the only people on your side are Nico and your daughter. Well, you're wrong, Mimi. I'm on your side, too. And so are an awful lot of people in the hip-hop community. You have my support and you have the support of a lot of people. No one is in any position to judge you. Heck, no one is in, is in any position to judge anybody. Everyone has a past, even me. Everyone has skeletons in their closet, even me. Benzino made sex tape of himself and Carly Red. We all know that. And Stevie J made an awful lot of sex tapes. You Google his name, you know what's going to pop up. I will keep it real though. When I found out about your sex tape, Mimi, I really was shell-shocked and disappointed. But now, I am inspired by your strength, Mimi. You're a very inspirational woman that has put Love and Hip Hop Atlanta on the map. So, don't break down, Mimi. Keep your head up. A lot of people are cheering for you. And I'm most definitely one of the ones that's cheering for you. Peace out, till the next episode.